Today we are reading from the Gospel of St. John, the words of Jesus, where he says, I am the bread of life. For the past few weeks, if you were coming to, to church on Sundays, or if you've been reading the Sunday readings, you've seen how Jesus reveals himself. He reveals himself in the setting of Cana of Galilee in a happy occasion. He revealed himself last week in last Sunday's reading in a troubled occasion when the disciples were facing a storm. And today, Jesus comes to explain to us why he is with us. He comes to tell us that he is the bread of life. He comes to tell us that he is here to satiate our hunger. That feeling of being hungry is not a good feeling. I know some of you didn't have breakfast this morning because you observe the traditions of our church. You come here without having breakfast because you want to obtain the Holy Communion. That's a beautiful thing. And some of you are maybe feeling a little hungry, especially that the smell of the co coffee is coming here. I'm one of those. I know I'm talking about myself. That feeling of hunger, it's something natural. We all experience that. However, there is a different kind of hunger that sometimes we're not aware of. And that hunger is the spiritual hunger. Our souls also get hungry. And if you pray the Lord's Prayer, in that prayer we say, give us this day our daily bread. And in that prayer, we ask the Lord to give us our physical and also our spiritual nourishment. Because just as our body needs nourishment, our soul also needs that nourishment. Our soul is hungry for God. But sometimes we don't know about that. If I stay away a bit too long from church, a bit too long from the Word of God, I personally feel that hunger. Some of you might be saying, that's you, I've never experienced that, that sort of hunger. I've never felt that I am hungry for God. But I can ask you the following question. Has there ever been a period in your life where you experienced a sense of injustice? Something happened and you felt that this was not, there was no justice. And you felt sad about that. You felt angry about that. Or maybe there was this period in your life where you were with a person. That person could be your parent. It could be your spouse, it could be your child, where your hope was to experience a perfect sense of love, but that sense of love was not experienced, and you felt frustrated. Those ideas of perfect love, of justice, these are ideas that come to us from God. We are created in the image and likeness of God. And these ideas are imprinted in our soul, in our mind, in our hearts. And it gives us big frustrations that those are not, do not take place in a perfect form here on earth. If you follow this logic, you will see that we are wounded human beings. You see that we all long for God, but sometimes we don't know it. We try to satiate our hunger with other things. The church today is half full. Other people who could have been here chose to go elsewhere. Maybe they went to the mall to do some shopping. 
Maybe they went skiing. Those are all good things, you know. We, we, we need the, the leisure time. But to mistake that, that leisure time, the shopping and all the other activities will satiate our hunger, that will be a terrible mistake. Everything that we do in our life to fill that emptiness that we feel inside is a fix. It takes us from point A to point B. But we realize that we're feeling empty again. It's like when you're feeling thirsty, you wouldn't go to the sea to get some water because that salty water will not help you with your thirst. We need something else. There is this famous saying which I have said before, that there is a hole in my heart and a bowl of ice cream will not fill that hole. As sweet as it tastes, it will not fill it. We need something else. And today in the gospel, we hear Jesus who says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats that bread will never go hungry. Bread, especially Armenians, we love bread very much, right? But Jesus comes to talk about a different kind of bread. He invites us to be his companions. Sometimes I see young people who tell me about their experiences of meeting new people and trying to see if they can establish a relationship with, with that person. And sometimes I ask them, where is it going? Where, how far are you in this relationship? And sometimes they tell me, oh, we just went to, to, to get some coffee. If they tell me we went to have dinner together, it means that they've taken the relationship to the next level. You agree, right? Jesus invited us to be on his table. And on his table, he offered himself as the bread of life. We are not only his companions, people who eat with him, but he offered his body as the nutrition that sustains us. Our relationship with God is this. God invites us to be like him. He knows that we are imperfect. We cannot do that on, on, on our own. But he extends that invitation. He sends his only son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us the words of God and who gives us the Holy Communion. We come to church to listen to the Word of God and to also to partake that Holy Communion. And we know that that will sustain us. Because by next week, when we start feeling hungry again, we can come back here. And that grace will be given to us freely. My brothers and sisters, we spend too much time going to Costco and other places to make sure that our pantries are full. Today's gospel reading is inviting us to make sure that our spiritual hunger is also satiated. And Jesus is saying, I can do that for you. Let's have Jesus in our lives and let's experience that fullness of life. May God bless you all now and always and forever.